Hi guys, this is a video about diamond, a revision video focused on uh, the structure diamond. Uh, first of all, the key sort of basic information, this is a diagram of the structure of diamond. You can see it has this tetrahedral arrangement of carbon atoms. There are four covalent bonds per carbon atom. Basic intro, uh, it is classified as a giant structure, which means it has a regular repeating 3D pattern, as do all giant structures. Its actual structure is its giant covalent, therefore that gives us a hint of the type of bonding going on inside the structure. The bonding inside diamond structure is covalent, that means there are shared pairs of electrons between the carbon atoms. And as you can see from the picture, the diagram, uh, each carbon atom can form up to four strong covalent bonds. and does form four strong covalent bonds per carbon atom. How does this relate to its properties? Well, for dual awarders, you need to know about the melting point and the conductivity of diamond. Triple awarders need to always think about the the hardness of diamond and its uses in uh, in industry so I'll talk about those now why does diamond have a high melting point it's because it's a giant structure but that's not what you want to say you want to talk about the bonding really when you're explaining about the melting point of diamond so what I would say is I would try and relate it directly back to this diagram and how many bonds are formed per carbon atom each carbon atom in diamond forms four strong covalent bonds this means that throughout the diamond structure, there are many, many, many millions of strong covalent bonds throughout that giant structure. It takes a lot of thermal energy to overcome or break those strong covalent bonds throughout the diamond structure, which is why it has such a high melting point. Diamond also doesn't generally conduct electricity unless it contains certain impurities which allow it to do so. So diamond doesn't conduct electricity, and again, you've got to consider why. So really, to start considering why, you want to think about why things conduct in the first place. For an electrical current to flow, for any electrical current to flow, you need to have a flow of some kind of charged particle. If that isn't happening, there is no current. These particles could be electrons or they could be mobile uh, ions. So flowing electrons or flowing charged ions creates a current. In diamond, all of the carbon atoms' uh, electrons are involved in covalent bonding. So uh, carbon has four valence or outer shell electrons, and in diamond, every electron on the outer shell of carbon is being used to form a covalent bond with another carbon atom. Therefore, diamond has no free available delocalized electrons which would be able to flow throughout the structure. It also isn't made of ions, it's made of carbon atoms. There are no um, ions which could be mobile. So even if I melt a diamond, which is very difficult to do, but even if I did manage to melt a diamond, it would not be able to conduct electricity because there'd be no free-flowing electrons and no free-flowing mobile ions. For you triple awarders out there, um, why is diamond so hard? The answer here is pretty similar to the reason why diamond has a high melting point. Again, focus on the bonding inside the giant structure. Each carbon atom is able to form four strong covalent bonds per carbon atom, and there are therefore many millions of strong covalent bonds throughout the diamond giant structure. Those bonds will therefore require a great deal of force to shear or break and overcome, and therefore it's very hard to shatter a diamond or, or break a diamond structure apart. So it's a very hard uh, structure as a result. That links directly into its uses in industry. So diamond can be used for tipping uh, industrial drill bits, for, uh, for drilling down to the earth or into masonry. It can also be used for edging, uh, cutting discs, for cutting up, uh, again, uh, in, uh, materials in uh, in building um, and n the newer applications of diamond include uh, as a heat sink so it turns out that whilst diamond is not a very good electrical conductor it is a very good heat conductor and it's starting to be used in heat sinks in micro processes so it's pretty cool really um, there you go guys a quick overview of diamond structure to help you with your IGCC examinations